Welcome to Soul What, a Soultopia production. Every Tuesday, Michelle and Roger Welch take a deep dive into the intriguing and proactive world of metaphysics, a world beyond our human perception. They'll talk to empaths, readers, and other guests from all walks of life to find out what's hiding under the surface, uncover the mysteries of our modern world, and reveal the answers you need to live a happy, healthier life. Now, here's your hosts, Michelle and Roger Welch. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing on this Tuesday? How are you, Roger? I'm doing awesome. What about you? I'm doing pretty awesome. How about you, Matt? Uh, I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Oh, that's great. I'm excited for tonight. You're excited? Yeah. 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 I thought you would be. So we're excited to have our guest with us tonight. We're going to dive right in, dive right in because, you know, we started this show off as 30 minutes. Do you remember, Matt? How many? No. 100 and... 172 episodes. episodes. <laughs> it's really 173 I don't know episodes. if I remember it being 30 minutes. Long, I don't either. I, I believe it was you. an hour. Did I just make that up? Yeah, you just made that up. I just did? Let's see what other bullshit comes out now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was... Was it always? Yes. I, th- I thought thinking so, that but I, I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering. It was always an hour. I, I think it was 45 minutes. My dream. It was 45, 45 minutes, maybe. but it was always an hour. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. It was 45 minutes, and yeah. I but was Michelle like, why don't we just hour. make it an hour? And then once we made an hour, it was just like, why don't we just make it an hour and 15 minutes, just so that Matt can always stay late. Yeah, well, there's always more to say. There's, there's always, always there's always you can't more. Pack, you, you can't pack this much goodness into one hour. That's right, especially when you have on a guest like we do tonight. So, as seen on Netflix's hit series, 28 Days Haunted, and Travel Channel's The Holzer Files, Shane Pittman is a paranormal investigator who has had profound, unexplained paranormal experiences since childhood. Pittman became determined to learn as much as he could by researching every possible technological method in the hopes of finding the truth about his otherworldly encounters. Pittman strives to use his passion for modern technology to advance the field of paranormal study, attempting to scientifically validate paranormal experiences using the latest techniques available. You can follow Shane on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and y'all are going to hear all kinds of other places tonight that you can see Shane. Uh, welcome Shane. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are y'all doing? We're doing really well actually. I'm yep. really excited to have good. you on the show and so I know that uh, Roger has watched a lot of your shows. Right Roger? I have. And Roger actually told me about and I was get it right, 28 Days Haunted, because I always leave out the haunted. But I used to. Yeah. So I think I said, have said 28 hours. I did on one show, and I apologize. 28 days. 28 days, 28 days. And Matt has taught me, or is trying. How many years now have you taught me to try to not point out all my mistakes, but I still point them I all mean, out? I mean, since day one, but I, <laughs> however long that's been. Five years almost? Yeah. I, I don't know. For I don't five remember. years. It's been a like, while. It's been a while. Just don't point out all the mistakes. But, yeah, yeah, I still do it. So have you watched some of Shane's shows, Matt? I have. I, I, I have. And I haven't. I've gotten kind of, uh, when I, back when I had uh, cable, and I know not all your stuff is on cable, but back when I had cable, that was primarily what I was watching, was just any, whatever paranormal show was on. Yeah. Since then, I mean, in the um, streaming world, I have watched fewer shows, and uh, and but I have, anytime a new one comes out or anything, sometimes something looks interesting, I am checking it out. So, yeah, absolutely. Right. So Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So, Roger told me, he was like, you've got to watch this show, you've got to watch this show, 28, I'm going to get it right, days. Why do I want to say hours? I, I think because somebody asked me, they said, if you were to go into place, how long would it take you to know something? And we'll talk about this, okay? This is a question for me late, <laughs> that I have for you later. And I was like, they were like, how long? And I was like, 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't being cocky. I mean, because stuff hits me really fast. And then if I sit right. there too long, I may start changing it. So we'll talk about that. So, uh, so I think I said 24 hours but 28 days I, I have watched some and I'm being very honest 
no shade to anyone else on the show, did I not come to you and say, most authentic? Yeah, you did. Shane Pittman. And that's that before we, mm-hmm. that was before we knew Shane, too. That yeah, was, I mean, totally I mean, we have no we... clue who Shane, as far as like, you know, no, no, Shane. I mean, I'm right. sure the others are great, too. It's just yeah. you stood out to me as having a lot of compassion and really caring about what you were doing. The minute, I think the first show I watched, and maybe it was the first show, you got on there and you're like, okay, I take this very seriously because I'm away from my family. I'm away from my children. I'm away from my wife. I'm away from everything I do. I take this very seriously. I'm not just on here to be on the TV show. I take it very seriously. And that, I believed it the minute that I heard that. And I believe that was the first time they even showed a clip of you. And so, and then through the whole thing, I just believed you, right? And yep. we t- that was the first thing I said to you. Yep. Because normally on some of them, we'll talk about this too, I, how, I will just go, I'm out, and I'll change the channel. <laughs> not your shows, but a lot of shows. Um, good, we good. Talked to I'm glad it's not my show. Well, of course it's not. <laughs> I wouldn't have you on here. Well, I might, but it wouldn't be as friendly. <laughs> Right? So, yeah. but Roger, you've She's watched. She's pretty fast at watching it and call bullshit on it. And yeah. On or just. To the next one. I mean, I'm sure it's easy to be judgy when it's not your show. It's real easy to look at something and know. I've talked to you since then. We went to Savannah, went on your uh, tour to Savannah, which I enjoyed with Dave Schrader, enjoyed so much. And heard snippets of you guys talking about how they edit and things aren't exactly. You know, they edit out a lot, uh, so that's another question I have. But let's start back. I want to know about, and they always ask me this question, and I hate it, but I really do want to know, like, how, how young were you when you started becoming interested in these things, and what are, like, quote, unquote, these things to you that we're talking about tonight? Well, my, my very first, I guess you would say, paranormal experience was when I was six years old. And I had a really vivid like vision or dream, and it would take me forever to talk about it, so I won't. But I went to my mother because it was so impactful to me, and I was in tears because it was uh, it affected me that much. Mm. And I went to her, and she said, "Wow, this this is something that is significant," and um, you know, kind of consoled me and kind of led me through all of that. Um, and so from six years old on up, I've always had this fascination of, of there's, I knew that there was more because I, I was affected at such an early age. Um, and then up into my teen, teenage years, I was having things happen that I couldn't explain, a lot of strange and unusual stuff. Um, and once I got to the point to where I could go and research for myself, could go to the library, get the books, get all of these things so that I could uh, burst myself in, I got immersed in books by Hans Holzer, by Price, by all of these, uh, what you would say, pioneers in the field, and I was hooked at that point. And then by, by the time I studied on about all of that stuff, then I started uh, getting in contact with people that were engineers that were making equipment that could test some of the experiences I was having. Um, like atmospheric changes, like if you're having cold spots in your home, yeah, there was stuff to test that and to actually show you um, in real time what was going on. Once I knew that there was stuff out there that I could actually use to kind of validate some of the things I was going through, I was hooked. And that's basically it. That's what got me on the journey of where I'm at today. Well, it sounds like your mom was supportive of you. Uh, that's something that not all of us have. Uh, in what mm-hmm. way? That's that's fortunate. Uh, how did she guide you? Could you give us like a little more insight into that? Because I have a lot of clients yeah. that come and and they're not. It's not that their parents are bad people. They just don't understand, or they're not supportive, or they maybe are scared of what their children are experiencing so i think it's always helpful for us to explain if parents are listening and they have children how maybe they could help right so my my mother's always been very supportive um one of the best people in my life but um she had a different uh opinion about what was going on she thought a lot of the times because i grew up in a in a very religious household Mm -hmm. so a lot of the times she thought that 
things I was going through was was I was being oppressed. There were things going on that maybe shouldn't be going on at the time. So whenever I say she was supportive, she was supportive and always trying to comfort me and always trying to make sure that she was there for me. Uh, but on the same token, she thought that it was things that shouldn't be going on. But whenever I got older, I was like, okay, there's more to it than that. Not everything that we experience is ne negative or evil. Just because we don't understand something doesn't mean that it's an evil thing. It just means we don't have an understanding of what's going on. And that fear is coming from a place of unknowing, just not knowing uh, the level of truth that maybe you need to know. So she's very, she's very supportive, but she was uh, very worried at the same time for me because of some of the things that was going on in my life. I get it. Same here. Uh, same, maybe a little more drastic in my case. We've yeah. talked about it a lot, but the same. Uh, supportive, concerned, uh, and looked at it as though maybe it was something that shouldn't. I was, uh, my parents are still extremely um, religious and uh, and very genuine and very loving people, but uh, don't see things from exactly the same viewpoint. And I don't intend to ever try to change what they they see or try to convince them what I see is different. It's just. It, it just is, right. and and I just want well, to drink a lot of orange juice. They gave me a lot of, apparently, Matt's heard this, or the listeners have heard. They gave me, my doctor at the time, orange juice was apparently the cure for everything I saw, so I had to drink a lot of orange juice, apparently. <laughs> so, so, okay. so vitamin C, huh? You, need, C. you needed plenty of vitamin C. Yeah. Um, you, you know, my, my mother, she would, uh, she would always try to, pray over me and plead the blood of Jesus is, is, is uh, what I like to call it. But even to this day, you know, there's a lot of stuff I do. I travel everywhere, and every time I talk to her, she's like, Shane, you know, you know what you've been taught. You know how you've been raised. I wish more for you than this, you know. And she'll still try to coax me out of things that I'm doing. Um, but I know it comes from a place of love, so... You know, I understand where she's coming from. She's got her belief system and her, her background, and I completely respect that and respect anybody that, that feels that way. But I do feel that, um, and we can talk about this more later, with my team, the searchers, that's how it all started was I'm searching for the truth, and I know there's other people out there that's searching for the truth too. There's more than what meets the eye. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's just one pinpointed way. I think there's there's different aspects of the truth out there and, and that's what keeps me on the search you know yeah i totally agree and and you do say that at the beginning of at least i know i don't know if it's the beginning of every show of the paranormal mind but i've listened to that today and that's the, the kind of the intro of we're, we're searching but no. yeah same so and right. roger knows i'm um, i've talked to you a lot about how uh, and I, I don't want to belabor it, but I will say it's so many people that come into our stores because of where we are. Uh, and it's actually increased during COVID, people searching for something other and saying, I just felt like there's more. I just want to explore more. And I have to reassure people. And I think they will listen to me. And I have credibility with a lot of people that come in to see us mm -hmm. because I can say, yes, I've, I've been through that same thing. And you don't have to deny everything that you've been raised and you believe, and you don't have to, uh, you know, argue with everyone about it. But you may, you can explore and search for a different answer. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> talking about, you, because you said you got involved in some of the people that help create and test uh, equipment. So mm -hmm. there's kind of, I guess, two ways of looking at, you know, the paranormal side of things is ones you got people that are very empathic, psychic that pick up on the energies and see stuff. Then you have the people who want to use, uh, you know, different tools and stuff. What do you like to do? It's a very good question. Uh, and it's kind of evolved over time. So, uh, my team, what I, it's me, Josh Purvis and Ray Causey, and, and we call ourselves the searchers. But we, uh, our, our experiments as of late have been involved with sensory deprivation. So there's a lot of uh, different tools out there that you can use 
for the sensory deprivation techniques and exper experiments. And the reason why we started off with that, because we started finding out that it would open ourselves up in ways that normally, like people like Michelle, like you, Roger, um, who uh, have that gift more honed naturally, uh, it would kind of key us in to that level or to your level of knowing of that uh, sixth sense, so to speak. And as we've been doing it and as it's evolved, um, we noticed that we need to do, use those things less and less. It's almost like it's fine tuning something in us that I do believe that everybody has some nature of it, some, some level of this knowing and some are just more fine tuned than others like you and, and Michelle. But, um, it's very interesting because, uh, it eliminates certain senses and then heightens other ones. And it's just interesting to me to test those different things in different situations in different places that have claims of heightened energy and, and things like that. Um, so what I like to do, it's a long, you know, long story short, I like the sensory deprivation or the sensory overload type methods mm -hmm. to see what kind of results come from that. That's really interesting. Um, I, this isn't sensory deprivation. I'd like to know examples of that, and I'm sure I'll watch more further into your show, and, I, and which I, mm -hmm. and I know we keep saying we're going to talk about it, but we are. Um, but I wrote about in uh, Spirits Unveiled, I think that's where I wrote about it, yeah, uh, that it seems to me, and I don't mean this as a judgment or, oh, we are better, but the people to me that seem like they've had the most psychic experiences, for lack of a better word, and psychic is very close when you look it up to um, faith. It's just something that we, just like paranormal, we really just don't know that much about it, right? Or we can't really right. explain it. So kind of reclaiming that word psychic, uh, I used to not use it at all. But a lot of people that to me, I'll go, well, I mean, she gets me, he gets me, that we will talk. And because if you just walk up to somebody, you go, I really, I. I really am psychic. I mean, I really am. Can we just talk? Because I really, I mean, it's, the people are going to go, yeah, right, whatever. But when you really meet somebody that really gets it, a lot of them had have had um, either out-of-body experiences, I've noticed, or they've had near-death experiences. Uh, and I'm not saying all, but I've had two near-death experiences. One, unfortunately, by my own hand uh, that I did when I was 30, and then one when I was younger. And then a lot of times where I've had a lot of people who've had trauma and they, which I've also had, um, where you pull out of your body, you just disconnect. And uh, without going into, you know, is that astral projection? Is that, you know, I'm just talking about pulling out of your body, just disconnecting. Does that tie in, do you think, any at all to, just pontificating here, uh, does that tie in at all to like the sleep deprivation? Deprivation. I mean, well, I, I, I believe it. I believe it does mm -hmm. uh, I, because, like you were talking about, it's like a disassociation to a degree. Like you pull away, and with a lot of the sensory deprivation techniques that we've done, um, it, it's wild to me because we do them, and sometimes you forget where you are. You forget what's going on around you it's, it's like you're stuck into a moment in time and everything else fades away and with people with high levels of trauma and different things going on sometimes that dis disassociation is the same type thing you pull away from that moment in time to, and that's your way of handling and coping with certain situations so yeah I definitely agree that um, there's some similarities there for sure do you then think that that discounts or does that give you, where have you landed or have you landed yet in thinking then that that's in the psyche of the, the person, let's like say me, the psychic, the medium, whatever you want to call this person, and the information they're receiving that maybe it's their energy, which I know is something you also bring up on your show, the paranormal mind, 
if it's them versus um, what they're actually experiencing. And that actually is something I explain when I do mediumship, and I'll talk about it if you want me to. I tell people I'm mm -hmm. picking up on, I'm either reading, if I was reading from Matt and he asked me about a loved one, I'd say, I'm not really getting anything from your loved one. I'm actually picking up on what you're thinking and what you're feeling. So I'll be very honest right. with them. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah. that's not, I'm not, I, nothing's coming to me about this, um, about your loved one, and I have to be very honest about that. Or I can say, I'm getting information from your loved one. It's just coming to me intuitively, but I'm not connecting yeah. to your loved one. That's another type of, it's, you know, information. Or I'll get, your loved one is actually a, in some way sense, sensing, you know, a sense or I see appearing to me and I'm very honest to the people aren't I and mm -hmm. it takes me a lot longer yeah. to do like galleries and things like that because I take the time to explain to them I may just be giving you a reading so to tie that back do you think some but and the fourth kind may be I'm just picking up on what I'm feeling and I need to separate that from mm -hmm. is that an intuitive hit or is that um, of something with me with the sleep dep deprivation or whatever, uh, or is that something I'm really getting from a situation that happened here a long time ago or whatever I'm trying to read about? Does that make sense? You know, yeah, it makes complete sense. And I think it's a little bit, it's all of the above. Um, I think there's certain situations where you go in and you're picking up on something externally. Sometimes you're picking it up on something that you're dealing with personally, and sometimes there's other people, of you know, on this side of the veil. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use this example over and over again, and, it, and it's really true because it connects with people that don't really have an understanding of it. But have you ever walked into a room after a couple had just gotten done having an argument, but they shut up before you get there, but you walk in there and you can cut the tension with a knife, you know, they always say you can cut it with a knife. You can feel that something is off, right? right? So that's coming from their energy. That's something that they are emitting out that you are picking up on. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't have a psychic or a psychic gift or a psychic bone in my body, but they walk into a place and they can sense that. And that is some sort of energetic connection that they are picking up on. They just don't realize they're not connecting that it's their body picking up on those energies, right? So I think it's, you know, situations where there's other people around that you're picking up certain energies from. And I think that sometimes um, you're in a location where the energy is so saturated for whatever reason, it could be a traumatic thing that happened there, it could be a lot of different things that you are in turn picking up on. And sometimes I think personally, um, I've investigated tons of cases where uh, the family is having high stress in the home. There's a lot of stuff going on. And they're like, Shane, this is the most active our place has ever been. And then I go into, well, what's been going on in your personal life? What's, what's been happening? And then from there, well, yeah, we had two deaths in a matter of months, blah, 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 and you hear all of this stuff, they're like, okay, well, that could be something that the family, again, is emitting that, that type of energy, and from that, their whole environment is charged. There's a lot of things going on that they can't explain, and it, I think it all stems, a lot of it stems from the family itself. So long story short, again, I believe it's a little all of the above. I agree. And one way that I minimize that is I always do a body scan of myself before I, I say always, I try before I walk into any setting, even for when I was a lawyer and practicing law a lot, before I'd walk into any situation, I should do it before I walk in here. Before you walk into the grocery store, you do a body scan to know what's your energy, you know, to mind your own energy and manage that. And then when you walk into a room, you are anybody can do this then you're much more palpably aware of every you know what that wasn't mine I didn't have a headache before I walked in here and I walked in here and now right. physically spiritually emotionally mentally right yeah, yeah. You, so you know we we kind of talked about this I think 
just us talking about it, like on 28 Days, there's tons of stuff out there that was filmed that never made it to the show and stuff. And you've got years yeah. of experience. What's the craziest thing you've had run across that, you know, just like, oh, shit, I can't believe that just happened? Um, well, I will, there's been a, a few of them, but I will say one of the most impact, impactful for me um, was on 28 Days on it. Um, because up until that point, uh, yeah, I had the visions and stuff like that uh, when I was six, right? But when we went into our location at 28 Days Haunted, we had no information of the location we were going to, so we weren't keyed in onto any of that. Um, then once we were there, we had no telephone, no internet, nothing that we could actually research anything. So we we went in blind. We had no uh, information. And I, uh, throughout the course of the 28 days, I had a, uh, a few dreams. And those dreams lined up perfectly with what happened there in the past. So it was basically, I was seeing a replay of the exact events that went on. And that was an old crap moment because it's like, this is, there's no way to fabricate this. There was no way that we would have even known any of this. And to this day, I'm still processing. I mean, we filmed it, what, a couple of years ago. To this day, I'm still dealing with the repercussions of that. Um, have had dreams since. Um, and it's just something that uh, it blows my mind I'm like I don't understand how it happened I know I was immersed in a place that was high energy but still to this day I don't understand how that complete replay was in my head and kind of pieced the puzzle together without having any prior knowledge of it so, um, yeah. so because you, you didn't know where you were going you did, did you know the other teams that were going out to or not no, we now there was speculation because whenever these things are going on, uh, you'll see we're, we're all kind of loosely connected, especially on social media. Um, so you'll see a lot of people saying, "I'm going to be off the grid for a while," yeah. and then you're like, "Okay, well, is this person involved in some way?" I mean, we there was a lot of speculation, but we didn't know for sure uh, who was going to be a part of it until afterwards. Hey. You know? Would you have jumped in the coffin like they uh, one did? I think I would have jumped in the coffin. I mean, it's just, it, it probably would have been, it, it probably would have been uh, troubling to me, but I probably would have done it, yeah. I think she kind of, uh, it seemed like it it's shook her pretty good, box. too. It's just a box. It was a box of some yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't, your mind plays tricks on you. You don't know, okay, well, has a body been in here before? How about like, you, you don't know. Five you know bodies. how I'm wearing <laughs> I'm She's weirdo. so full of it. I mean, I she would have said that now, but yeah, when it comes no. right down to it. What's in our guest bedroom? You know, oh. in our house, that if you're in the bedroom with the crucifix, um, it's the, actually it's from a, a cross coffin. From yeah, then we don't want you there. You might as well just go. Like if you get in that room, then we're just hoping that you'll like leave the next day, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of kidding, right? No. But we, I got it. I was like, oh, I really like this cross. And they because well, the way was. I was raised, Jesus was always off the cross. So, you know, it's on the cross. And I was like, I want this. We're going to hang it in the house. And um, we get it home. He goes, you know, that's a coffin cross. And I go, oh, we're putting that in the guest room where we don't like people who come over. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all, well, hold up a minute. So you have a guest room that you don't want to have guests in? Um, it's a joke. She doesn't let people come to the house. <laughs> when Matt comes over. <laughs> I'll, I'll know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding because the... The Raggedy Ann doll that's like the Annabelle, whatever doll, she is pretty, I mean, I've had her since I was little. I, I was given by my parents all the things that you <laughs> don't want to give a child that sees everything. So, I don't know, the fin, what, it's not the ventriloquist, it's the, it's the dummies. Well, you don't want to say that word. See, you're going to, you you can't be on TikTok anymore. I don't, I don't okay, know so the the thing, this thing, <laughs> and then I was given a clown. Then okay. I was given the ra life-size Raggedy Ann doll and a rocking ch antique rocking chair. There were two antique. And, I don't know, big old long snake and a, like, not a fake one. Uh, you know, yeah. now all that stuff's up in the guest bedroom, too. Yeah. The, 
the don't come over again guest bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> so you put all, you put all the scary stuff in the guest bedroom. Yeah, in that guest bedroom. The the other guest bedroom, guest bedroom is like the the luxury. Uh, somewhat. 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 <laughs> somewhat. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually sort of kidding, right? Sort of. Yeah. Not really. Sort of kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, um, we had a couple of people on on YouTube, uh, and again, if you're watching, if you mm -hmm. happen to be watching on Facebook, head over to the YouTube page. If you have any questions that you want to throw at us, we'll try to get to as many as we can. And we had a couple of people comment, so I'm gonna Shane. I'll ask you uh, one. Angie says, um, "Do you believe all people should be privy to the truth?" And this actually, I mean, you brought up something earlier that made me think of this. Is you were saying, you know, people will say, "I'm not." psychic but i i can feel the energy in this room or i i've run into a lot of people who and you probably have too who have said uh i i'm i don't believe in ghosts but i did have this one weird thing happen to me or my grandma told yeah. me a story or you know I, I don't believe in spirits but every morning when i'm having coffee my daddy comes visit me as a cardinal um so like <laughs> do, you, yeah. do you run into a lot of those people who just seem like they have a block put up and what is it and do you think everybody can be ready to believe that ghosts are real if they're presented with the right evidence or some people just will, will never. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, what stops, what stops people's fear? Uh, because it's the fear of the unknown. Uh, a lot of people won't like to admit it, but it's because they're afraid. It's because they don't understand something. And a lot of people have come across, and I've met a lot of people like this, is they'll come across as, oh, this is it's a bunch of crap, or, you know, it's whatever. But again, that's from a place of fear, because if they do find out there's more, then sometimes they feel like, okay, well, they need to change course, because the course they're on right now may not be the best for their life and for um, the higher good, I, I, I like to say. So I think a lot of it has to come from uh, a place of fear is they, they don't want to know because then they'll have to face another level of truth that they, they never really entertained much before. Um, I do believe that there's some people that are not ready um, because there's a lot of personal things that they've gone through, there's a lot of things that they have to work out before they're ready to reach another level of enlightenment or whatever you want to call it. But I, I think that some people, uh, I think all people can get to that place, but uh, it's not something that needs to be forced or rushed into. It needs to be um, in the right time, in the right setting, in the, uh, in the right place. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, we, have, we also had a question from uh, Kelly. This kind of goes back to the, the technology stuff. And she asks, what kind of equipment could you use to find out why a certain set of lights come on and off by themselves at times? So maybe as an expanded on that question, you know, are there certain types of equipment that work better for some situations than others? And what's something that people may be able to get on their own that can help them in a lot of different situations if they feel like they have something going on? Right. So uh, disclaimer first, I would not recommend just anybody going and especially when it comes to uh, trying to communicate with something that they don't understand or communicate with spirits. Um, because, again, sometimes they, they get more than what they bargain for. Like they, they don't expect uh, things to happen, and they're not ready to handle those situations. So um, first things first, make sure that you're ready first. Make sure you study up. Make sure that you're in the right place spiritually, um, even physically, make sure that you're in a, in a good place before you kind of go on that path. And as far as the lights going on and off by, by itself and stuff like that, um, there's things called EMF detectors. And these are just, you know, you can use the electricians use them. A lot of people use them. Um, you can use EMF detectors to see if there's uh, natural things going on. Sometimes lights going on and off by themselves are not anything to do with spirit at all. It's because you have electrical problems and you need to get it handled in your house. So uh, one way to find that out is, is you can have different things that uh, you can use. You can have some somebody, uh, an electrician, come by and check your house uh, with the lighting and all that stuff to make sure that you're good to go. Um, 
I've even come across in a lot of the investigations I've done um, residential wise, which I don't do a lot of residential anymore because my schedule is busy. Uh, but you would have family members, certain family members feeling really sick, nauseous, dizzy. And they're like, oh man, I, I must have a demon or something in my home. And uh, they were freaked out. When you go in there and you take an EMF detector, there's really high levels of EMF because something was wired improperly. And a lot of people don't know that if there's high EMF levels in your home, like electric electromagnetic field is what EMS stands for, or, or frequency, uh, if there's high levels there, then your body is physically going to be affected. You're going to feel nauseous. You're going to be dizzy. Mm -hmm. So those are all natural things. So uh, one thing, uh, that's another piece of advice I can give is somebody, uh, if somebody wants to go into this field, um, eliminate all natural things first before you jump to the spiritual side of things. I, I think we like to jump straight into, oh, this is Grandma Betty talking to me, when really the light's going on and off is just that electrical problem. So we just need to make sure that we're going into it with a clear head, a level head, and um, yeah. It's a long, long answer, but there you go. I'll interject. Do you have more questions? May I say one thing? So when I say something um, a little bit opposite, I mean the same thing. So I said on something the other day, I was actually talking about you and Dave and your y'all's trips. Um, anybody who wants to go on to learn more, the trip I took, and it was a short trip to Savannah, but they used all kinds of equipment and I, will, I must say that I think from the people who use the equipment side, they may think, okay, this is giving me evidence. This is how I went in. And from my side, which there's not sides, I'm just saying from my perspective, I was thinking you're going to have to convince me that those things mean something, right? And I was convinced, I was convinced because it was uh, very much, very, very professional. So we will give... Uh, links to how to find the tours that you have Shane um, that through Maria and, and Dave Schrader has but it was really good and I learned a whole lot and I talked about that on my Instagram lives and I talked for a long time about how much it changed my per perspective mm -hmm. of it uh, people who really know what they're doing with the equipment and so I think that's very important that you say you not only prepare spiritually but you also if you're going to do it Roger has classes and knows what he's doing but you don't get really deep into using the but the equipment not really we, we kind of i have a few pieces that we show and play with and kind of walk through how it's used but not deep as, as no. on the trips mm -hmm. that they go on and so if you're going to do that go on you know somebody who's very legitimate and they know and the trips that shane uh takes if you can do one of those trips uh, they have them going all the time so we'll put the links for that because it really convinced me it persuaded me in a way that I did go in being a little skeptical because I'm, but they're skeptical of, okay, is she credible, right? So it's not a, it's not a us versus them. It's a collaboration. But you do look at, I think anything, and you're like, okay, is this credible? If you go to the dentist, you want to know, is this a credible dentist? They know, do they know what they're doing, right? In any situation. Well, and it's, and it's good to be that way too. I mean, I, you, it's good to, to always question. It's good to make sure that. Uh, you're looking at things, not hypercritical, you, you know, but lo you're looking at it critically enough to where you're, you're making an informed um, decision on what you're believing and, and what you're, you know, that, what you're witnessing at the time. So I think it's a, it's a really good thing to do. And you were talking about my events and stuff. And, yeah, if you're listening and, and, or you're watching and you want to join – uh, it's not just the investigating and learning about the equipment, but it's building strong friendships and relationships. I think that's really important because all of us need to um, have that in our lives. And I think it's something that we cultivate a lot of really strong friendships out of these events. And I think that's really important. And that's what's really special to me. So. And thank you for saying that. And if you do listen to the, that long thing that I put, I say that in there. I was like, I'm very impressed at the the people that were on this trip. Did I not say yeah. it over and over? They're just, 
uh, they were everyone was so kind and cared about each other, everyone and uh, so it was I don't say this was life changing to me very often I was like it kind of changed the course of my life I mean Shane's work working with us now at Soultopia I mean I believe there's divine intervention and there's no accidents in the way things happen but back to kind of what I was saying there for me uh, I have a few questions because I hear a lot of people say you know you have to believe for me there are some of the things you said about the lights flickering I'm not saying that there's always a ghost around but I do believe there's always some sort of energy, energetic beings around us a lot more than people realize. If we, and so I define that much more broadly, I guess, as far as energetic beings. And so that's why I wrote the book, because it kind of can make you a little, it's a, you're a little different when you see them and you feel them your whole life. And so uh, every time a light flickers, especially these fluorescent ones, it doesn't mean there's a spirit in the room, right? Um, I mean, that's, so you do want to rule that out. But at the same time, I made a statement the other day, and I said before, be, instead of just, a, and I changed the word from ghost to, to, to be spirit, an, an energy being. I said, before you just, mm -hmm. ass, you get excited that there is one, why don't you just assume there's an energy being around in somewhere in your, in your, like environment, there's, there are going to be energy beings around you, whether they're um, element, elements or plants or trees. There's energy that affects us. So I'm just saying it in a different kind of way. But, and I also, a thing that where I vary a little bit is um, just, is that my book, I mean, it clearly says it because Llewellyn doesn't let me get away with anything. They put it right on the cover so they get, mm -hmm. people can just get mad at me right away, but nobody yep. did. It, I, um, I don't believe there's a veil and, uh, because since I was little, I would go to church and they'd, everybody be like, there's this veil, there's this veil, there's this veil. And I'd be like, where, I mean, there's the angel there's, I mean, we're singing heart the herald angel sing and I'm pointing and then I'm getting sent, you know, to the back of the church and instead of the front row Baptist, I'm the back row Baptist. And so I, I think we, all of the things that I say and that you're saying, they're just different ways of saying things. I, I don't, I guess why I want to ask you is because I heard on a show, some, a guest on one show say, you know, you have to believe for anything to work. If they're trying to clear something, which I don't believe in, in automatically clearing things either. I think you should ask what's going on. Um, but the guy said, you know, you have to believe. I want to know what you think about that. Do you think that you, to me, if there's a, a, an energy being around me or around in here, it doesn't matter if Roger believes it or not, it's here. Um, how do you feel about that? And you don't have to agree with me because I, I write a lot of stuff that people don't agree with because of, you know, my experiences may be our experiential filters are different, right? So, right, right. How do you feel about that? So, I, I think, uh, no, you don't have to believe, but I think belief eliminates that veil that we're talking about. There was, there's no veil in, in your case, Michelle, because it's always been, you've always been able to see, but to some people who are not on that level yet, there is a sort of Divine. veil that that every once in a while they they get to peek behind and see something mm -hmm. because whatever reason for them uh you know spiritually or whatever they're not ready to yeah. see uh at that level yet so whenever i talk about a veil of any sort it's it's, it's something that's blocking them because they're energetically not ready yet mm -hmm. um as with you um it was just naturally there from a very early age, right? So there was no veil to you at all because it was always just out in the open. Yeah. Um, so again, I, I love to answer questions and, and take probably 15 minutes every time to do it. But um, hey, there's another I don't one. believe you. Shane, Matt, it's the Michelle Club. <laughs> I, the Michelle Club. <laughs> I, think, I think the difference is. Yeah, I'm. 
answer questions in 15 minutes. I think you like to ask questions in 15 minutes. Oh, come on. That's not nice. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't think you have to believe, but I think whenever you, you – do believe in your mind is in you're in that frame of mind it eliminates that veil to where you're open to receiving more um than you know not believing if that makes any sense it, yeah. it does uh, because and i think maybe that the people who say you need to believe it maybe comes from the ones who are using a certain they're praying with the praying and screaming the psalms over someone or the lord's prayer and saying if you don't believe yeah. it, then it's not gonna i don't know well, i think you do have to have an open mind i think and i don't know if you call that belief or not but i think you have to be open to the possibility that this could be going on before you yeah. can really make any progress and trying to figure stuff out yeah right? Yeah, it's right, and and, there, and I, I preach this a lot too but the, i believe that everything we do especially in this field too is all about intention um, setting that intention, uh, whether it's positive or negative, you're going to get results positive or negative. It just depends on how what your approach is. Yeah. So I think that um, let's say instead of do you believe, like are you putting your intention out? Right. Maybe that's another way of looking at it. Um, do you need to set intention to get a certain outcome? I believe so. Yes. Like if if, if you're if you're wanting a positive experience in your life and you're setting intention on you're setting your intention on everything negative are you going to get the positive nine times out of ten you're not mm -hmm. so uh, I think it's really important in, in setting intention or that belief in the right direction in the right place to get positive results I, th I think that's true yeah yeah makes sense yeah let's do a quick giveaway Oh, okay, so we're going to give a giveaway. Because it might take people a little fast or give them a... Okay. We'll see. So, so this is, is it sage? This Spray? is sage, smudge, and protection, dragon's blood, sage, and sage, yeah. So this actually has the dragon's blood and the sage spray plus, or sage oils, plus a few other essential oils, and it has tiger's eye in there for protection. Why is it only filled up to, so, I know the answer, but explain why so it's only filled up that we, high. I make, these actually I've won awards for multiple Yay. times, uh, but it's only loaded here. This is actually the uh, essential oil load. And then we actually, in the stores, we have crystal gym water that you can mix your own gym water to top it off. So this is what we're giving away tonight. So here's our trivia question of the evening. Name, give us one, the name of one show that Matt, or Matt, <laughs> Shane has been on. <laughs> Matt. Besides So What. So What does not count, but give us one of Shane's uh, titles. And we are watching on YouTube, like mm -hmm. we've been saying. So we're watching on YouTube to see who the winner is. Yep. Spelling and, does not count. Yeah. So, and while they're answering, Shane, here's a question. So paranormal, big thing, but... Are you interested in other things, cryptids, UFOs, anything else that you're into also? Um, well, I love cryptids. I love UFOs. But one thing that, like, my heart is into is true crime type stuff. So I, I love to create and, and do documentaries and, and filmmaking and stuff like that. Um, and I've had really close family members that um, – we've had things happen where there was missing persons, uh, situations and, and, uh, cases. So even my team, the searchers, we've done some true crime documentaries that, that's not out yet because of, you know, there's behind the scenes stuff we can't really talk about too much. Mm -hmm. Um, but outside of the realm of the paranormal, the true crime is where my heart is too. I love, uh, digging deep and researching uh, and trying to find answers. Again, it's all about the search. It's just in a different capacity that I love to try to dig deep and see if we can help uh, add a key or add a piece of the puzzle to uh, something that's been uh, unsolved for many years, you know? Yeah. Very cool. And we have that in common. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, but I got permission to talk about one of my cases in my 
second book uh, from the mm-hmm. DA and from the family. So uh, it's it's a pretty interesting. It was a, what it was on what is it Dateline? Um, yeah, not was, my was, part in it. No, but it was uh, actually on several shows. Yeah, it but was such they, a, big deal. a whole yeah. lot of those. But it was a case here, and and I worked on behind the scenes, and finally, I never uh, said any was I'm. Usually when I'm consulted, I, I'm sure somebody won, but I'm trying to hurry. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm consulted, I I don't get to write it on my bio. Uh, so all the people who usually write on their bio as mediums that they, there's a few, like the TV shows that, that used to come out where she got to, what, Allison, whatever her name was. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I'm not allowed to write it on my bio. Uh, the investigators just call me. I don't call them. They call me, and uh, so there's one of them in the book. It's a pretty high-profile case, uh, pretty interesting that I worked on. Yeah, I like those two. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, it's, it was a very cool. Sad, but it was it was a, a very interesting um, story. And we want to talk about the winner, and then I'm going to tie what I just talked about into my little prop. Yeah, uh, Kelly gotta, Torres. Kelly. Kelly won. Kelly. She's fast. All right. right. There's lots of there's lots of right answers in there, but Kelly yeah. chimed in first she with just 28 fast. Days Haunted. She got those fast fingers. <laughs> yeah. That's right. awesome. Talk I knew it would be an easy question for people to get and be fast about it. You might show my props. So Michelle's got her props So I up collect here. Lady Justices, you guys. Sometimes they have blindfolds and sometimes they do not. Did y'all know that? Depends on what courthouse it is. But out of we were just looking at today's news... And, of course, it'll be gone. But there's a case, and it looks like it's in Dallas. Um, and there's the short version is there's a mother that looks to be the primary suspect. Maybe she's been accused in the death of her child. And it, the, the headline reads, Police, Noel Rodriguez Alvarez's mother... Uh, worships Mexico's death saint, which would be Santa Muerte, right? Mm -hmm. So we have Santa Muerte bracelets. We have um, the reason, and and the biggest thing that has come up for me lately is, is that a closed practice or is is it not? Um, We have a lot, we talk at our stores a lot about appropriation. Should we, you know, uh, can you practice something that's a closed practice? So that's been what's more on our mind, but really what is interesting to me is to look at things from a legal viewpoint. If something, and this did come up in that case that I worked on that's in the book, uh, they had found some, in the defendant's house, they found some, what they find? Some incense, mm-hmm. and, well, I think it was incense. <laughs> and so I said to the t- I was like, if y'all bring that, <laughs> I mean, Don't bring they that. have incense, and that's going to make him be, I mean, that's going to be in evidence. But as far as um, Santa Muerte, that's the, uh, it's a, a saint, uh, n- not a saint. It's not recognized as a saint, but it is a cult-type worship that I have a lot of friends that uh, worship Santa Muerte. That means death, and death comes to us all. And so it got to be known as, this is a short, fast version, um, a lot of people, like if you were in the cartel, uh, they would, and that's what this article talks about. It only focuses on the fact, well, this is people who are on the cartel. These are criminals. These are Well, the reason a lot of people went to this saint, to Santa Muerte, is because they were accepted. Uh, so it's, it's not just people in the cartel. It's people who are on the fringes of life. A lot of LGBTQIA, a lot of people are in the the um, religion of Santa Muerte. And as we know, um, you know, a Wicca comes under attack. Well, Wicca was accepted as a religion, and I believe it was like in the, and I'm not sure where I wrote it, but um, uh, I think 1986, I can't even remember the name of the case. I had it all, it was Detmer, I believe. And uh, so it's a protected class under the First Amendment uh, and a protected religion. So it's a very interesting thing to me, interesting to me that they're bringing up that this is an in, of interest in any way whatsoever to say that this mother, they found an altar to um, Santa Muerte. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as, as a lawyer, it gets my ire up. It's not whether I think she's guilty or she's not guilty. 
I'm like, why that is not admissible to go to her, at least her credibility as a witness under the rules of evidence. It's not admissible. And then, uh, so it's a very interesting to me, to, something I would like to keep following because it gets precariously close when you're admitting evidence or trying to admit evidence about someone's religion uh, to say that that is a reason they may have committed a crime. Uh, and we watch that very care carefully here at Saltopia because we try and not discriminate. Uh, we welcome everyone uh, into our store unless it's something that is like racist or pure hate or things like that. So I'm not sure if I explained it really well. Do you want to jump in? Um, no, yes. You good. Okay. So I just, I was looking at the headline and of course my, it just gets me because I'm like, okay, what case is this? And do I need to talk to the DA about this? Because, uh, you know, if it was an altar to Mother Mary, I don't think we would be having it make headline news. Uh, and it's just because it's to the death saint and the fact that so many people are now as long as you don't consider it a closed religion, they're very interested in Santa Muerte because she's a, she is accepting of all because death comes to us all. So everyone is welcome into that religion. So um, that was very interesting to me. And we'll see if it's mm -hmm. entered into evidence and used against her. It has nothing to do with whether or not, I don't even know the facts of the case, but it's interesting uh, to me. Uh, and, and I follow those sorts of things because... Uh, we even, uh, I won't go into the facts, but when Roger and I uh, were in court one time, uh, some things were brought up, and it was a family law situation, some things were brought up by the judge, who was actually, what was he, a pilgrim or a Puritan? Puritan. One or the other? Puritan, literally. Uh, some things were brought up in court that legally should not have been brought up in court. And I let it slip, but I was going to file a mandamus against him, and we were like, okay, we're just not going to do it. But we really do need to watch when people are, um, it could be ghost hunt people doing anything paranormal. They're going to look at it and say, okay, that's not acceptable. And we need to see what part is protected and where we're protected under the First Amendment and look at those rights. And I think it's something, as an attorney, people are like, how do you still use that? I use it to pick juries. I use it to um, help investigators when I get medium or hits about where mm -hmm. people are, what's happened. But also when I see cases where I see things, in my opinion, being abused in the law or potentially being abused. So that's why I bring that up. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting too how that negative is always focused on um, in these particular cases. But whenever somebody of a certain religion or whatever is doing something good, it's swept under the rug. So I mean, if you're going to use it, be consistent and go across the board with it. I agree totally. I agree. So I'm going to keep following it, and it's they they definitely jump out at me. And just really quickly, I will say it was really funny, Shane. I my daughter's graduating from law school, same place I went. Um, I guess next weekend, not this weekend, but um, and she asked me to come help her judge a case. They have these mock trial cases, and she was a judge, and. Uh, I, I, she was the presiding judge, and I was sitting with her, and she, she, once I got there, she goes, oh, by the way, one of the witnesses they may call is a fortune teller. And so it was, <laughs> it was really funny because, um, and they ended up being, I think the word got around that the psychic was in the building judging because I was scoring them because mm -hmm. uh, they didn't, but the day before, the first question that they had asked the fortune teller when she got on the stand was so you scam people out of out of money for a living right <laughs> that was the very first question when they got on the stand oh my gosh I think the word got around <laughs> the the whole law school that you know lawyer and fortune teller for lack of a better word was in the house scoring and so yeah. they acted very appropriately <laughs> but it is it's, it's interesting to look at all the discrimination and the ways it gets used in the law and how actually it was like two or three cases, and I told you this, Matt, that I found it interesting that these cases were getting written. Uh, they're based on, typically, on real cases that were involving psychics and involving paranormal activity. So at least they're realizing, I mean, it's coming into the mainstream. So it's going to start yeah. in the court. So yeah. I found it interesting. Yeah. Very cool.
So tell us about what you, tell us about searchers. We, I know we're over a little bit, but not much, right, Matt? Okay. So tell us about searchers and what you have going on. And I know so much has happened even just in the past two weeks, three weeks with what you have had going on. Right. Right. So um, just real, I'll try to be short. So we, I started it over 10 years ago. It was like a, uh, it's like a baby project of mine. And, and then I got involved with the Holzer files and doing all that stuff. And we kind of put it on halt for a while. And then after all of that, we kind of jumped back into doing things. And um, since then, we've been investigating places all across the country. Um, and we're constantly filming right now. And for the longest time, we were trying to find a home that would make sense for our show. Um, we were going the network route at, at a certain point, and we had a lot of interest, but it's just things fell through because of the nature of how streaming is right now. It's kind of in an upheaval. Uh, so we said, you know what, we're, we're going to release it for free. We're going to release it on YouTube uh, so everybody will have a chance to kind of join the search with us because we, we say it all the time that, yeah, we're searchers, but I believe that there's many searchers out there. So if they can join us and feel like they're a part of something, then, you know, that's mission accomplished for us. So we've been releasing episodes on, on YouTube. Uh, we're going to be releasing the second episode pretty soon. We released the first one a few weeks ago, and I think it's over 26,000 people have watched it or 26,000 views so far. So very humbled and thankful for that. Um, and we're going to be filming in Oregon um, later on in the year. So we're just we're keeping trucking right now. And we've got a Patreon uh, for people who want to monetarily support, which they don't have to, but we have one um, that uh, we do a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that we're filming, and all that good stuff where we show them and give them to our episodes before we release it to the public. Um, so, yeah, just that's basically it. We're just moving along, filming, and investigating strange and unusual cases all across the country. Well, and did you play the clip, Matt? Were you able to play uh, it? Do we we have haven't time? played it yet, no. Do we want to play it? or If you'd like we, to, we can. Do we have time? Uh, sure. Okay. Let's play the clip that we have. Okay. This is where it all started for me, really. Um, some of my most profound experiences, some of my first ones, happened right here in this town. People are hesitant about the poly jail. Well, the poly jail carries a lot of negative history, of course. But there have been people that have uh, died in the jail. Well, the most notable one was Aberdeen Johnson. It's typical of a mention at that time. They castrated him before they pulled him up. We opened the door, we went in there, something latched onto us, followed us back over here. Not even 10 minutes later, we're seeing shadow figures. If you're looking for ghosts, yeah, the town's pretty active. And, and if you talk to people, you know, they'll tell you they've seen ghosts. Everybody's got a positive spin on their ghost story, except for people when they talk about the poly jail. It seems like there's something more than meets the eye. Every time we asked Sheriff Rogers about the poly jail, he was always trying to deflect. Okay. If we could get it open, would you walk us through? Or? Yeah, it will. His whole demeanor changed. I think there's something else going on there. See that shadow movement? Who died? He died. Was it Aberdeen? That's right. I smelled something tug my shirt. Go ahead, touch him. Go ahead. Dude, I just felt something touch my arm. What the f Got a little midnight snack out of all of us, really. Oh, s I think it's time we get to work. Everybody's got a ghost story, and they've all got their own ghost, but it could all be the same.
Looks pretty good. Yeah, that's really cool. So that'll be our third episode. Um, we've already released the second one on Patreon, and it'll be released to YouTube um, here in the near future. And then, yeah, that'll be our, our third one. So yeah, I'm excited about it. So you can contact. I'm sure everybody wants to know, and we'll put this contact information, but at um, www.officialshanepittman. That's two two t's in pitman.com or searchersbelieve.com i have to show my shirt i almost we almost put it on you want to it, roger? <laughs> um, and roger has one too but they have great swag too and they have great sponsors because i ordered from the alien soda company just so you know i ordered roger quite a bit of stuff i think a lot's mm. still in my cart but we got to pay for it so you can get yeah. shirts and all kinds of stuff from um to support their show and it's yep. really good so thank you so much for coming on Shane um, we're not going to do are the wheels coming off over yeah, there <laughs> um, we're not going to do readings tonight mm -hmm. since we went over but a little bit but Shane the other thing I want to brag about is that Shane is so busy uh, he does all these these TV shows he's TV famous and does these movies and podcast, podcast and all the I can just tell you going on that one trip where I was going, what, we were gone only that four days or something? I was like, yeah. I'm worn out. How do y'all do all these shows? <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't even lead the thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of coffee. A lot of coffee and, and just uh, just going forward. That's all we can do. Well, it's a lot of yeah. work is what it is. It's, but y'all have a good time, too. And like you said, it's really they're really good people. But you guys want to check out everybody really i would check out those those trips for sure and then check out the those websites for the shows uh shane's being humble about how fast they got so many followers i mean it's just skyrocketing so you, you want to be a part of it and watch these shows and and be a part of it in any way you want to whether it's the patreon or uh, watching the shows or just or subscribing and following uh, just whatever you want to do because um, it's it's a thing everybody's hopping on because it's it's really good so you want yeah and, and sorry I didn't mean to interrupt but and real real quick before I go well, I'm going to be in Joliet uh, Illinois uh, at the Joliet State State Prison with Dave Schrader mm -hmm. of Ghosts of Devil's Perch he's on uh, the Holder Files as well and he's been on tons of other shows uh, it take me forever just to list them all um but we'll be there uh may 5th through the 7th and you can go to darknessevents.com if you want to uh join us last minute um we'd love to have you it's a lot of fun if we weren't doing Tide, yeah. we would be there, right? That's so right. one yep. last thing we need to announce is Tide, and then we will go for the night. Tell them where they can buy tickets for so Tide. So we still have tickets for Tide the, for the full weekend passes, and the website is theinternationaldivinationevent.com, mm -hmm. theinternationaldivinationevent.com. Click Tickets and scroll down you can actually get your tickets there for um for the weekend yeah. uh we still have the discount code which is save 10 which gets 10 percent off plus you get one of the tie t-shirts uh we have got those um, ordered and when you come to the event you can pick up your shirt there we've had several people take advantage of that they're all excited about getting the shirts too yeah. They have Jamie Sawyer's artwork for Tide. You may have seen that on some of the different things. They'll definitely be on the front of the program. And we've been talking to some of our um, sponsors, like Llewellyn, Red Will, Yay, Red Llewellyn. Feather, yeah. you know, U.S. Games. And um, they're having they're going to have some little prizes for the grab bags that you'll be picking up while you're at Tide. Oh, yay. Yeah. Plus prizes for the bingo party and everything. Right. And for the song shuffle. Roger keeps not mentioning I'm the not. song shuffle, but I'm telling you it's going to be fun. It's from my intuitive class. But if you can't come to Tide, then go to the prison. Because if I wasn't, go to prison. Go to prison. I'd be going to prison. Get off <laughs> I'd be going to prison. But thank you so much, Matt, as always. Thank you for awesome. staying over. And we appreciate you so much. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Shane. And we thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. We appreciate you too. And anything else? Oh, uh, that's it. All right. Thanks. Until next time. See you. Good night, guys.
Thanks for listening to Soul What, a Soultopia production. If you're intrigued, searching, or looking to schedule a reading of your very own, visit us in sunny Dallas, Texas, or visit us online at facebook.com forward slash Soultopia Holistic Boutique. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcasting platform to be the first to hear new episodes every Tuesday at 730 Central. 